Hey, movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Untreated Media Podcast. And this is going to go off the rails real quick, because our schedule's already kind of off this week anyway, thanks to Josh's life and existence. <laughs> it's always but, my fault. It's always, always my fault. Always. <laughs> but uh, this week, we're going to be t- talking about and breaking down all the stuff, I guess. There's stuff to talk about coming out of D23 2022. I'm still on the fence of whether or not this is our fault or Disney's fault of should we have gotten our hopes up so high? I mean, maybe because the years pass, but uh, we'll, we'll get into everything. But boy, it, it, it was a thing that happened this weekend. Josh, yeah. how are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm hanging in there, man. It's uh, Today will probably be my only day off for two weeks. So we're we're are hanging in there i uh yep so i've uh, i've kept up with d23 that's about it honestly when it comes to watching stuff i uh after we're done after we're done here i'm gonna go watch episode three of uh, rings of power because i haven't Mm. had a chance to watch that yet i have heard good things um yeah that's kind of about it there's a lot of trailers that came out this week though so yeah well but not a lot of, I, I don't want to bad mouth them. Not a lot of good trailers, but there was a lot of trailers. It was a lot of teases <laughs> of like, hmm, yes. interesting minute and a half things that we can share on various social media platforms to boost our engagement with audience. Um, So I watched a couple <laughs> things the past week. I watched Jurassic World Dominion on Peacock. Uh, I watched the extended cut because that's the version of the director told me. And we just watched, we talked about extended cuts last week. God, this movie does not need to be two hours and 40 minutes. Also, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting, but at the same time, still pretty bad. But as I'm watching, I'm noticing a lot of parallels to the Star Wars sequel trilogy of... Interesting. Oh, oh dear God, does it hurt when this your trilogy is not mapped out from the get-go, but also the director of the first movie comes back from the direct to be the director of the third movie and tries to retcon away decisions that happened in the mm. middle movie because it wasn't cohesively planned out. Um... All the Jurassic World movies, like the sequel trilogy movies, don't feel like one linear narrative because characters change so much in between movies. Like, mm. Owen and Claire's characteristics fluctuate so much from movie to movie of like, so do you care about animals? Do you not? Or are you an animal person at all? Um, same thing here. There's character motivations that I'm just going... That doesn't really line up with where we left you last time. And also, <laughs> in true Rise of Skywalker fashion, this tries to retcon away some very controversial decisions that were made in Dominion. No, not in Dominion, in Fallen Kingdom. Um, one in particular that I absolutely hated. Uh, I don't know if their choice made it better or not, but <laughs> it raises a lot of questions. Uh, there's one issue that I have with it that I don't see nearly enough people talk about. I see more people focusing on the whole bug thing, which is definitely a thing. Um, Henry Wu, you know, the main antagonist for this entire Jurassic World trilogy, it's completely swept under the rug and ignored that he's been a bad guy. And he just seems to be like the Igor to Tim Cook, the entire movie of like the brilliant scientist who's just being berated by his boss that wants to do good. I'm like, he created the Indominus Rex and had no remorse. He was selling stuff to InGen and was bad for the first two movies. We're just going to completely ignore that. Like, yeah. I've been waiting for his violent, visceral death because the longer you leave a bad guy alive in a Jurassic movie, the worse her death is. I was, I've been waiting for, okay, we've purposely kept him alive for multiple movies now. How is he going to die? Nah, he's a good guy now because reasons. Also, without dipping into spoilers, the bad guy for this movie is literally Tim Cook from Apple. Like, they don't even try to hide it. Like, haircut, <laughs> style, mannerisms. It's also p- played by the same guy that played um, Spider-Man's dad in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. So the whole time I'm just going... Weird. This is... I can't get you out of my head. That character out of my head. Um, also watched a horror movie called The Faculty. 
Josh, have you ever heard of this movie? No, I have not. What in the world? So the faculty, I was interested in it, um, one, because it was written by Kevin Williamson, who is the same guy that did like Scream, H2O, very 90s horror movies. And God, this is very 90s. It's, I had fun with it, but it's super, super all over the place. It's basically Invasion of the Body Snatchers, except on a high school campus. Like all the teachers are evil and the students are the ones that have to figure stuff out. But I was more interested because <laughs> this movie is such a time capsule of the 90s. First of all, the movie kicks off with an Offspring song, and I'm going, Oosh. Gotcha. <laughs> Does the song fit? No. Did I have 90s and 2000s flashbacks? Oh, yeah. But I was more interested in this movie because let's look at some of the names involved in this and just go, How? Jordana Brewster from the Fast and Furious movies, Josh Hartnett, Salma Hayek, Famke Jensen from the original X-Men movies, Christopher McDonald from Happy Gilmore, Usher, Robert Patrick from Terminator 2, John frickin' Stewart from The Daily Show, Elijah Ooh. Wood. Like, what is this movie? What in the world? Like, <laughs> that, 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 none of those actors belong together. No. Also, um... Josh, you should check it out at some point, but I'm going to spoil something for you. It's gratifying, kind of, seeing Jon Stewart get stabbed in the eye with a pencil and his face <laughs> explodes. It was Love so that. bizarre. It, it was just a weird movie. Um, that's when I texted you that Elijah Wood, back in the day, would have been a great Peter Parker. Because yeah. he's, he's absolutely playing a Peter Parker type of, I take pictures of things. Why? Because it's an interesting character quirk, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's campy, it's schlocky, it's stupid. I have fun with it. So you know how, like in the thing, they do a blood test to see. All right, if you're an actual, if you're actually a monster, this will not go well for you. They do that, except they snort caffeine pills, and I'm going. Okay. Uh, okay. They're not sure. in pill form. They're they're crushed, but still. I mean, yeah, but that's like just they, so. What happened is I can I can I can see it in my head. Is they send the script off right, and they're like, so wait, why do we have a bunch of teenagers snorting coke in the <laughs> middle of this movie? Oh well, uh, uh well, it's that. It's uh, it's crushed caffeine pills. Oh yeah, okay, that'll pass. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it it was a it was a movie. It was weird. I kind of want to own it because it's that kind of weirdness, though. Uh, also, I watched season five of Cobra Kai. I Yay. don't know if I'm in love with it as much as some other people are. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a good continuation of the show. But I know some people are like, it's the best season yet. I'm like, the cast is getting a little too big, and we may have one or two too many narratives going on. But it was nice to finally get some rivalries that have been going on since season one to finally, you know. Bury the frickin' hatchet and move on character-wise, which is nice to see. Uh, if we get a season six, I would like it. If not, I'm fine too. I think season five ends in such a way that it's definitive enough, but they've set some stuff up that we can get a season six. Um, yeah, it, it was good. Um, let's get into some news, because there were all news this week. Starting us off with our first trailer of the week. Um... I'm kind of mixed on this trailer. I, I'm still excited, yeah. but I think the trailer itself could have been better for the, I don't want to say Knives Out sequel, because it might not even be a sequel. The next installment in the Knives Out franchise, Glass Onion. Now, the first Knives Out was my favorite movie 2019. I love Knives Out so much. I've been excited for this one. The trailer... It was fine, but then I think back... I don't know if the trailers are necessarily the best parts of the first Knives Out. I have to go back and watch those trailers and try and watch them as subjectively as possible. Be like, are you still as good as I remember? Uh, were the trailers for the original Knives Out this good? The cast is stacked. Like, we oh, talked yeah. about it plenty of times. We had a whole episode talk about who we wanted to be in future Knives Out movies, but I forgot how many people are in this. And, oh, I cannot wait. Um, yeah, Batista, I think Batista is going to just be a riot in this. Seeing grown man Batista in a Speedo firing <laughs> off a gun by a pool and going, yeah, that makes sense. Um, checks. Yeah, that checks that, out. <laughs> that sounds right, considering he's supposed to be a YouTube influencer. I'm just going, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> that sounds odd. <laughs> that sounds right. To that which, tracks. oh my gosh, if the trajectory for his character is, hey, I started as a YouTube influencer and then I became so popular that the WWE wanted to sign me, a la Logan Get Paul. out of here. I'm not here for that. No, sir. No, I'm like, I, I definitely have, uh, I have questions. I have many questions, especially like glass onion. And then I was started to think about it and I was like, oh, cause you know, onions like a mystery has layers. Like, like, a, like an ogre has layers. Uh, but then also if it's a glass onion, it's a delicate mystery. That's cool. Yes. Okay, cool, fine. I'll take that. Um, Daniel Craig's accent is still terrible, but I love it. Uh, <laughs> there's, yeah, like you said, the cast is absolutely stacked, and I, I don't remember, I don't remember liking the first trailers for for Knives Out, the original. So, and I think which is why we were so pleasantly surprised with Knives Out. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm down. I, I kind of, the the one thing I think the trail this kind of teaser doesn't really do is kind of explain why all these people are in the same spot. It's kind of like hint, not necessarily hint, it's alluded to as far as like, hey, these people seem to like puzzles and they were all take, you know, putting this on this boat. But that's kind of the extent of uh, what we're kind of told story wise. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super, super, super stoked. Um, it's going to be a gorgeous film at the very least. Like, gosh, and it's going to be, hilarious at some point and like absolutely so i think that's also what kind of was throwing me off is knives out the first one has such a distinctly warm aesthetic of mm -hmm. like a chilly um east coast feel to it whereas this is warm sunny vibrant italy uh so i'm like ah okay th that's just gonna take me a little bit of time to get used to i do like the idea of these people come together for what they think is just a murder mystery party and then mm -hmm. it ends up being the case like an actual murder or at least that's what it looks like in the trailer what i also could see happening is they think it's a murder mystery and then it becomes an actual murder and then they'd be like ha ha i'm smart enough to figure this out let me do it myself and then you get benoit blanc just going ah, no I will figure this out, you idiots. Like, uh, and just like the first Knives Out, I like the diversity of the cast in terms of yeah. you got your big name people, but also you've got your lesser known people uh, that haven't been in stuff in a whole lot recently or some bit players. You got some people that are on the rise. Like uh, you got Jessica Henwick in it, which I'm like, she's really coming up fast. Yeah. And I, again, I know Honest Trailers joked about it, but I wouldn't mind if they recast Iron Fist for the MCU and just put her in it instead. Um, That'd be hilarious. Um, so it was. It's a good trailer. It's not bad. Um, I'm still very curious whether or not this will reach theaters because I feel like that's still an ongoing conversation that needs to be had between Netflix and the theaters. Um, maybe not Regal. We'll we'll see if Regal's still around come December. <laughs> yeah, but geez. it's only getting worse for them. Uh, it's just it's whatever it's fine um maybe i was expecting better but then again i need to go back and watch those first knives out trailers to remember if they were truly excellent or not or if it was yeah. just we were surprised in the theater yeah because i remember them being very very vague is all and that and in this trailer if anything is equally very very vague so while we didn't love the Knives Out uh, trailer, there's another trailer that I'm also incredibly just lukewarm on, I guess. And that is the final, quote unquote, final trailer quote, for Dwayne unquote. The Rock Johnson's Black Adam. Although, um, while I was just kind of ho-hum about this trailer, thank God they didn't say the hierarchy of the DC universe is about to change in God. this trailer. I'm so sick of that line. Does he get that that, like, that line is becoming a meme at this point. Like he, is he aware? There's no way he doesn't. There's no way he doesn't know. Yeah. It. It's just, we're sick of it, but they basically, they dropped the final trailer during Thursday night football. Um, go bills. Rams looked super awkward in that game. Um, but they showed this trailer and I'm still incredibly hesitant about this movie. Like I know I'm supposed to be getting more and more excited, 
and I am for all the things in this movie that aren't called Black Adam. I'm super <laughs> yeah. excited to see Dr. <laughs> yeah. Fate. I think the more I see Dr. Fate, the costume looks perfect. Pierce Brosnan looks perfect. Uh, Hawkman. Oh, you've perfectly translated Hawkman and I cannot wait. Uh, I really like what they're doing with Adam Smasher's suit and I have mm -hmm. no knowledge whatsoever on Cyclone so I can't even pretend to be like, oh yeah, they're doing justice as Cyclone character. I think they're they're really bringing a new element to that character. I, she's twirling. It looks cool. Like, I don't know. Uh, but you know, this trailer does the one thing that they should have done a long time ago. Show the freaking villain. Which, if you're only just now showing the villain, it makes me wonder how much he's actually gonna be in this. Um, but also, maybe they're holding a lot back from the trailers because we do see the same stuff over and over and over again of whatever fight happens with Black Adam, um, Hawkman, Dr. Fate in that like brown goldish city whatever color corrected city that is <laughs> we keep seeing that one action set piece over and over and over again so maybe they're hiding some stuff i don't want to say i'm souring on black adam but i'm becoming more and more cautious of it as opposed to just leroy jenkins blind bum rushing into this movie going i'm excited like i'm not that anymore of <laughs> this that visual you're, yeah you're what you're what there buddy are you are you excited are you are you excited i'm excited. like bad i i'm kind of with you though because there's a there's a i'm still thinking about the app excited <laughs> um to me i i think they're they're uh they're kind of do going with like a suicide squad thing. Cause technically we didn't really know the villain until the movie came out. Um, we didn't really know what was waiting for them in the actual, you know, in the laboratory and all that stuff. So like there's certain elements, like I'm completely okay with them, keeping them, keeping those kind of story details, like out of our minds. Um, it's or, sorry, it, 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 out of the trailers so that, cause like you said, We've kind of seen the same action, same action set piece over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so I'm really curious. There's no way that this movie is going to be like 15 minutes long and we're only going to see two action set pieces. You know what I mean? So like it'll we'll, we'll see. Um, did I know I haven't done a whole lot of research as far as who the villain is. Supposed Sabak. To be? Who? Sabak, to which my brain immediately goes. Isn't that the Star Wars card game? Yeah. That Han beat Lando in? So, but yeah, his name is Sabak, and he's basically a demonic entity within the DCEU. I'm going, cool. Move you to the side. Edrican, please. <laughs> Move that's, you to the side. Or like Trigon, even Trigon. Please. So in that vi that, and that's why I, I have questions, because in that very short scene of him coming out of the water, I was like, I'm getting... I'm getting Trigon vibes, but there's no way that they would introduce Trigon without Raven because that relationship doesn't make sense uh, unless like you can't have one without the other. It'd be like put, taking Joker and plotting, plot, plopping him in, in uh, Metropolis like that just doesn't make sense um, character wise. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. I, uh, I like you. I'm still very lukewarm on Black Adam, which is, I think, really crazy because I think maybe two months ago i was pretty hyped yeah same and, and and now i think the over uh saturation of of content that that's been sent out to us and just like the weird it's, things it's the that same rock... content yeah and that's that's what it's like okay i, I don't know uh, i will see we will see maybe what we're seeing is literally 20 minutes of the film and that's it um I hope that's that's all it is, um, and there, that there's so much more going on. Um, and I really hope that Black Adam is a like a villain villain by the end. I, I really don't want them to lean into this anti-hero thing because that's really not, at least to my understanding, what Black Adam is. Yeah, I here's one I'm kind of hoping and thinking might be the case. Uh, maybe the entire first half of the movie is a is set in. 
uh old Kondok, like when he is still Teth Adam before he even gets the powers, and maybe like he maybe like the halfway point is him getting cursed or banished or whatever, and then like put away for those five thousand years before he's brought back. Like maybe we spend a decent amount of chunk of time with him in the past before we bring him to the present. So maybe this is like the big action set piece. Here's the other thing that's kind of giving me pause for concern. And I know directors can have good movies and can have bad movies, but as fans, we often do the, well, what did you do recently? What was the last thing you did before mm-hmm. this? The director of black Adam did Disney's jungle cruise with Dwayne Johnson, mm-hmm. which is why he's doing this movie. Cause Dwayne Johnson was so impressed with what he did with jungle cruise. that he's just like black. Adam, yeah. I'm going. <laughs> Cause that content is like, like it's so related. Like, come on. I mean, jungle cruise isn't, terrible but like that's like it's not terrible but it's just using pirates of the caribbean's leftover pieces yes i agree exactly using story verbatim i'm worried that it's it's the rock more just going it's not so much that i thought the movie was good it was you let me do what i wanted for jungle Mm -hmm. cruise you gave me a lot of creative leeway for better for worse like you could tell a lot of the dialogue in jungle cruise was ad-libbed and off the cuff which i'm not against ad-libbing but to a certain extent you need to kind of rein it in a la thor love and thunder (laughs) um so i don't know i'm just kind of getting more and more worried about black adam of just like we keep seeing the same stuff over and over again and who knows maybe this is because they're having a big surprise element to this they they have surprises that they don't want to ruin also dwayne johnson You know you're a marketing guy. Yeah. So, Josh, did you see this thing about him and the test audiences? No, I didn't, So he was host. He hosted a test screening for Black Adam where he was, quote-unquote, where the audiences, quote-unquote, couldn't see him. I'm going, the man is gigantic. There's no way the audience didn't see him hiding in the eighth row behind Chuck there. Um, So he comes down at the end and... Before anyone starts asking them questions, he goes, What'd y'all think of the movie? I'm sorry, Rock, but you're gonna taint the people's perspective of the movie. They're not gonna tell The Rock, Hey, we didn't really love your movie. Um, That's not how that works. So if you wanted an actual gauge of what your audience was saying, don't show up until afterwards. Like, if you're that confident about your movie, wait until the feedback then come out and thank people for their time. But the fact that after the movie's finished, he was just like, hey guys, what'd you think? Like, come on, come on. Worse yet, he's asking all these questions like, so what did you like about the ending? I'm like, that's not a question for a survey. That's, yeah, that's not how that works. That's not how test screenings work. Like, or what made the ending great? I'm like, that. <clears throat> that's, that's not how that works. The question should have been, what aspects do th- of the movie did you like? Did you not like? Or what are your thoughts on the ending? Saying, why did you like the ending? Or what did you like about the ending? Is such a super leading question. Yeah. Like, come on now. You're, 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 for- you're forcing the reaction. Like, I can see myself, like, getting that question and be like, well, especially if I didn't like it. And been like, well, I didn't like it but i don't know how do i phrase this in a way that still answers the question yeah so So. i'm just like "Ah." it's so weird yeah i just that's not how surveys work that's not how test screenings work so chalk our last news story up as uber uber weird like i don't know what's happening with lucasfilm maybe some wires got crossed and some stuff came out that shouldn't have but it it ended up not being consequential uh last week on the podcast i made the prediction that we would get an ahsoka casting news at d23 well that's kind of (laughs) right ahsoka got cast but not mentioned at all at d23 we'll mention that uh as i'm gonna see if i pronounce this right but i'm Horrible with names. Uh, Iman Esfandi as Ezra Bridger in the upcoming Ahsoka series. 
I am not familiar with this actor's work. I saw that he was in uh, Will Smith's King Richard last year, so Mm -hmm. I'll check that out at some point. If we're going by just physical appearance, dude looks spot on. He looks like an older Ezra. The, The real conversation, I think, here is this dropped, like, Thursday or Friday Mm -hmm. before D23 and Lucasfilm said nothing about this it was like it was an announcement meant for D23 and then once it came out via the official trades like Deadline and Hollywood Reporter they're just like "Uh, all right well it's out there guess we don't have to say anything about it like no you probably could have still said it because it wasn't super circulating like i think if you weren't in the clone wars bubble or in the Die Hard movie bubble i don't think this flew across your radar this yeah this felt like his purpose being swept under the rug to be a big announcement at d23 this just felt very odd to me yeah it's um <laughs> first of all like i hey you were right they were gonna announce ezra over before thrawn uh, but who knows what kind of damper that put on any potential f- plans maybe that they had at the panel, which is hard to tell now because as we'll get into, nothing was dropped, nothing was said. So it's to me, I would think like if I don't want to like doubt that it's official or doubt that it's real, you know what I mean? But like the because of how it's been kind of like put under the rug a little bit makes me feel like oh well we weren't supposed to say that sorry yeah it it was super bizarre because like it had some there was like some sources that were saying a different actor like a day or two before the official thing and then this actor um again not super familiar with this work but if this is their big break, congratulations to you. I hope you are absolutely fantastic in this role because Ezra as a character, I very much enjoy and has one of the better arcs because when I first meet him, he's a lot like uh, like Aang, the Avatar, of just annoying, frankly, when you first meet him and then grows to be a very interesting, mature adult. Um, Space whales. <laughs> I still am questioning that. I love every second of that. It, it's all right. Let me rephrase. If they hadn't teed it up like three or four episodes before that, the, that finale, I would have been super like, um, no, that's no. Okay. No. But uh, because they did, I was way more forgiving. Um, for those who haven't seen Rebels, I, you're, I really I hate the required viewing thing. Uh, going into Ahsoka, but I think I like first. Like I know a lot of people. You and I both know quite a few people that wrote, have written Rebels off simply on animation style alone, um, and I think that's does the show a great disservice because it's, golly, is it good? It hits goes hard in the paint, especially in the later seasons, um, and especially when like if there's almost like a moment where you can see where like. Somebody told Dave Filoni, like, hey, we know how much you love the uh, the, the the extended universe that's not canon. Um, if you want to kind of like start sprinkling some of that in, feel free. Like, you, there's a very, like, visible moments when that starts to happen. And it get, to me, it gets really, really exciting. And now Dave Filoni has some power in live action stuff. And he's, you know, just mm-hmm. starts sprinkling it in Mando. Now we're going to start mm-hmm. sprinkling it in Ahsoka. We got Bad Batch season two, cool ish, I guess. Um, but like, I I feel like we've talked about this before. This is going to lead to bigger and better things. Of yeah, Ezra's cruel and everything. When is the blue guy showing up? Because he <laughs> has to. Who's it's, gonna play Thrawn? And why is it not going to be Benedict at Camp Cumberbatch? It's gonna. I have talked about this with my coworker, and she and I both are on the same page. Of it should just be the guy from the animated series because. He's got the voice, but he also still can physically pull off the character. I highly doubt they'll do that. Is it, what, Lars Mickelson, I think? Something like that. I mean, if your name is Mickelson, you are the bad guy, clearly. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It's like being Sean Bean in a movie. Yeah, so uh, you just have a, you're typecasted for a certain role, buddy. Yeah. Sorry. Mads Mickelson, Lars Mickelson, Phil Mickelson, always playing second <laughs> fiddle. But, <Aww. laughs> but this is... 
I'm excited because it means Ezra's coming. I'm excited for this actor who I've never heard of. Sounds weird, but I'm excited that we actually have some casting. Just thought it was super weird that it was from actual places like Deadline and Hollywood Reporter. And Disney was super, super quiet, as we'll talk about here in a little bit. That was the recurring theme of the weekend. But as per usual, before we get into our main discussion, this episode is sponsored by TeePublic, your one-stop shop for all things Uncharted Media merch, whether it is t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, whatever you want with the Uncharted Media logo on it. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on whatever audio platform you're listening to us on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Helped us get to 700 subscribers before the end of the year. And we're only 16 away now, people. So help us out with that. Y'all have been super awesome lately. And then we'll talk about Dark Jar Jar if it happens before the end of the year, which at this rate, we definitely will happen. I'd be surprised if it didn't. Yeah, yeah we we done goofed if something happened. Uh, now getting to D23. Uh, okay. So, first of all, before we get into any of the lack of new stuff, I get wanting to have some stuff for the people in attendance. That's totally mm -hmm. fine, like Comic-Con and everything else. It's super weird to me, the events that you chose to live stream and which ones you didn't choose to live stream. Like, all right. The Disney Legends panel, that's live stream. The video game panel, that's live stream. That was a good idea. The parks one. Cool. The rest of them, not so much. And then, but on those things, on those ones that were live streamed, when they showed something to just the audience, they would cut to something else. I'm like, that's what you should be doing. I think D23 should be live streamed for most of the big panels. But the stuff that's being exclusively shown to people in the theater, cut away to like some pre-established B-roll or commercial or something else. Like, if you want to have some exclusivity, totally fine. It's totally okay with me. That being said, <laughs> what the heck, guys? Oh my gosh, I should, probably should have known from the get-go that this was going to be a lousy D23 when, uh, what was it? Thursday or Friday, it started on Friday when JPEG does like the opening ceremony. He's coming out with this horrendous beard and goes, this will be the biggest D23 of all time. We've got the most announcements, the most news that we've ever had for D23. And I'm just going, you sure about that? Well, yeah. You sure what? about that there, Bob? Because you lied. But then again, you just chapecked, lying and chapecking are interchangeable at this point. And no, I will never back down from my hatred of Mr. Frickin' Clean. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go down the list of how it happened at the event. So like the games panel, the film, yeah, Disney yeah. films and animation, Lucasfilm, Marvel stuff. Um, we're not going to cover everything. We're just going to hit the major points because... There wasn't a ton of stuff, but there was an there's some interesting stuff. So on Friday, I actually watched this live. They did a games panel. What the heck happened, guys? Like, <laughs> are you just 100% making the switch to mobile games? Because 90% of what they showed was coming to a mobile device near you. I'm just going, that's cool. Oh, God, sure. are you becoming Nintendo? Uh, you're just solely making the move to um, to mobile games. And they'll be like, oh, but we don't have any games to show. Um, You have Fallen Order 2 coming out nah, next year. That's not, nah, that's not a you thing. You confirmed at um, either Comic-Con or one of the State of Plays or something like that recently that we're getting a Wolverine game. We're getting nah, Spider Man no, no, Two. So no, uh, that's not, that's not Marvel. No, sorry, sorry. But <laughs> but we did get something announced, Josh. What, yeah. what did we get? So apparently, on top of the Fallen Order Two, Spider Man Two, and um, the Wolverine game, which are like you said, weirdly absent from this. Um, we are they are developing a Captain America and plan and and Black Panther video game. Now, I didn't see it live, and I'm kind of getting a lot of stuff secondhand. Is this the same 
game or two separate games? This is the same game, so you're going to be able to play as four different people. Captain America, Black Panther, which will be T'Challa's grandfather, um, uh, one of the Dormer Melage, and a Howling Commando. So you can play as one of the four, and it's set in World War II. I'm going... Okay. 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 Um, so maybe like... Ooh, what if like Ulysses Claw teams up with the Red Skull or something like that? Okay. I'm I was already at least interested enough, even though that's a very interesting pairing with Captain America and Black Panther. Yeah. I I'm interested in it because the people developing it are Skydance Media, which is being headed by Amy Hennig, who did the first three Uncharted games. And when asked, she's like, yeah, this game's basically just going to be Uncharted. I'm going, so that's what happened to you. <laughs> so after Uncharted 3, she moved over and started working on a Star Wars game that was supposed to feel like Uncharted. We even saw a little bit of it previewed one year. Like, it got pretty far along. And then, you know, typical Disney fashion, they scrapped it, never to be heard from again. I always kind of wondered, well, what did she move on to next? This is it, which was not Fallen Order, guys. Fallen Order was something separate. Even a Fallen Order plays like Uncharted at times. So, if you say anything Uncharted related, I'll be there in a heartbeat. Uncharted branded solitaire. Cool! You said the magic <laughs> word. Also, solitaire is dope, y'all. I like solitaire a lot. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. it's just more of an odd pairing to me. If this was, I get that, I'm kind of worried that they're just like, Black Panther's hot right now. Make it Black Panther. The pairing that I would have been much more interested in seeing is Captain America teaming up with Wolverine in World War One or World War Two. That could have been very cool. Mm -hmm. American and Canadian fighting together alongside one another. Yeah. <laughs> and then have, I... like, Captain America. Yeah. Well, Captain America kills people, but maybe have Captain America be more of like a no kill and Wolverine be Wolverine and the conflict that can the team conflict that can come from that. I think that would be a more interesting pairing, but I still like Black Panther. I think this is just an odd pairing choice. Yeah, no, I agree because it's the thing that like to to me that comes to mind is okay, are these games quote unquote canon? Um, are we saying that this hat is this a part of the Marvel universe, the cinematic universe? It, I don't think it is because I think that would have me meant. Yeah, I don't that think so either. Spider Man, the Spider Man game would have technically been canon, I guess. But like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but so no. But at the same time, it doesn't make it any less weird. Um, feels like they're taking like their top. It, it, it really does feel like they're like, well, Black Panther's hot right now. Let's throw him in there. And people have been egg begging for more Captain America. So let's throw him in there. And it's like, and I love the idea of having more than two characters to play. But when two of them are Captain America or blank Black Panther, I don't know if I'm going to want to play the other two now maybe i'm wrong maybe the the domalage is going to be really fun but even like that like why would i play the howling command <laughs> yeah it, <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> like gotham knights sure there's other people i'm not playing as anyone other than nightwing nightwing could be the most jank against my playstyle type character in the entire game i don't care he will be the only thing i play or like Game that have different classes, like mm -hmm. um, Battlefront 2, there's four different classes. I only ever play one or two. I never touch the other two at all. That might be the case here. Maybe they're just building it just to just to have it. I don't really know. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was weird how much they leaned into the mobile stuff, which I was not a fan of. But getting away from that, uh, they next talked about Disney films and animation. So just the Disney movies. Um, Pixar, whatever else. So they started us off with an enchant well, disenchanted trailer, the sequel to Enchanted, many, many years later. And once again, I proclaim from high heaven, James Marsden does not age, people. Holy <laughs> crap, he looks exactly the same. That being said, this looks like a lot of fun. 
It looks yeah, very charming. It does. <laughs> the only thing that's concerning is coming to Disney Plus. I'm going. Oh, um, it's that pain gif of just going. I want to be excited, but if it's so good, why aren't you releasing it in theaters? Because Nate, we need more content on uh, Disney Plus in order to boost our subscriber numbers. It doesn't matter if if they if we actually make good money on it. Subscriber n- numbers is more important, um, which is really sad because I know a lot of people are really really hyped for Disenchanted because that's like that is for me one of the uh, Enchanted is one of those movies that I was like I got dragged to kicking and screaming but left it. And like enjoying the rap being as good as it is, yeah, yeah, it's incredibly charming. Um, and they shared only one trailer from D23 this past weekend, and it was the (laughs) disenchanted trailer. (laughs) I I mean, but that doesn't surprise me. Uh, but yeah, like it's okay, but the 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 coming to Disney Plus, which a lot of these projects are only coming to Disney Plus, um, which is not surprising but still upsetting um yeah oh that's just disney in a nutshell not surprising but still upsetting welcome to the chapek era uh, the chape the paycheck era um yeah i the trailer is great everybody's it looks just as charming just as interesting still kind of a flip on the way you know an alternative take to the disney princess which is what enchanted kind of plays with quite a bit um, I'm intrigued. I, I want to see the crap out of it. So then they talked about the live action Haunted Mansion movie, which is going to theaters. I thought that was going to be a Disney Plus movie, but it's it's going to theaters. Um, here's another one that they could have had a really cool moment that it was cool for the people live in the audience. That Make no mistake. But at the same time, when it flipped around, it was going, well, yeah, we knew she was in this movie. So what I'm talking about is at the end of the Haunted Mansion stuff, they're just like, we've got one more surprise for you, one more person that's been added to the cast, and they wheel out, with its back to the audience, a Doom Buggy, the ride vehicle from the actual Haunted Mansion ride, which I'm like, that's a really cool touch. Uh, It starts to slowly turn around, which I felt bad for whoever was operating it, because as soon as it starts turning around, it like, jolts a little bit, and it's like, doesn't turn around fluidly at all, so... She's like turning around in stages, uh, but it turns around to reveal Jamie Lee Curtis, which don't get wrong. I'm still excited. She's in Haunted Mansion. But we found this out like two or three weeks ago that she was cast. <laughs> so when it revealed, it like, I'm like, well, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we know. We, we know what They're like surprise <laughs> casting of Jamie Lee Curtis as Madame Leota was like. We know oh, you, you, were not, like, you announced that a bit ago. What are you talking about? Like if you've turned it around and it was hot, I don't know, Julie <laughs> Andrews, no. like that would have been cool. But it's like, it's like if they were like, all right, we know Harrison's not here today. Just to, to, to show you, you know, Indiana Jones, he'll be there we tomorrow. Have one more surprise for you. And he comes out and it was like, well, yeah, you just we mentioned know. it. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I'm still excited for Haunted Mansion. I thought it was cool that they wheeled out a Doom buggy. I will never get sick of seeing Jamie Lee Curtis. But at the same time, we know. Like, and also <laughs> supposedly the people in the crowd got to see some footage and it teased some cameos that'll be in the movie. I'm going, cool. Hopefully that footage didn't reveal all the cameos in this. Um, Guarantee it did. Oh, and Wilson's in this, I think, too. So that that just makes it better. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, wow. Spoopy, guys. Wow. Uh, Spooky. Um, but <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was, it was a cool reveal. But again, we knew she was coming. Yeah, again, we know. What? <laughs> it in a nutshell. So then Barry Jenkins, the director of the, the next mm-hmm, Lion King, mm-hmm. which sounds weird, comes out to talk about Mufasa, officially titled Mufasa, the Lion King, to which I'm just going... Okay. Do a quick search. Is the original movie called Lion King or The Lion King? Because I wouldn't have been surprised at all if you told me the original one was just called Lion King and in typical reboot fashion. They just add the on there yeah. and it's just called It's a Different Movie. But no, the original is The Lion King too. Uh, also, even as someone that grew up loving The Lion King, still do, watched it all the time, 
I always get Mufasa and Scar mixed up, and here's why. Mufasa, to me, sounds like an evil name. <laughs> I'm always just like, Mufasa's the bad... Oh, nope, Scar's the bad guy. Mufasa is... Oh, Mufasa's the dead. Right, 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 right. Uh, but here's the catch with Mufasa. They're telling it in two different time frames, which I'm going... So, did you just like working with some of the original cast from the 2019 one that you just had to find a way to loop them back in with Timon, Pumbaa, and Rafiki? You just yeah. had to bring those actors back for this? Is, is yeah. That, that, that's kind of what it feels like here. So, I'm calling it now. I don't know how, many, how much story details they've let out, but I, we know it's a prequel. I think when they say two different timelines, I'm thinking... This is Simba telling his kids about his father. Yeah, like, probably. to me, that's exactly what it is. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they turn Scar into some kind of, like, a sympathetic type villain. Of like, like a Loki? Hey. Like a brother first? Yeah, like a brother. But I mean, obviously, like, Scar still goes on to do terrible things, but give us a little bit of a, an understanding of like, Oh wow. Yeah. Like that's, that kind of sucks for him. I can understand where he's coming from. And then maybe like kind of giving Simba some, some kind of like understanding of who his uncle, who he has killed, um, <laughs> uh, giving him some understanding of his, his own family by telling his kids about, uh, about his family as well. What I would love to see. But also at the same time, it can be absolutely heavy handed is whoever his adopted family is, because supposedly he's going to be like raised from nothing to royalty or something, maybe. So either Scar could tell him this or whoever adopts him and makes him king could tell him this. I'm just like, yes, you are powerful by yourself. But look at the wildebeest. One is not terrifying. You are not afraid of them. It is a gentle creature. But together... They're forced to be reckoned with and foreshadow, you know, the death of Mufasa. <laughs> Scar yeah. using wildebeest to murder Mufasa. <laughs> and still to this day, I'm not quite sure. Well, no, it had to be the wildebeest because I was like. No, there's still the question of what killed Mufasa. Was it the fall or the wildebeest? Like, I could see either way. Well, we'll get some uh, some forensic forensics on it, and uh, really do an autopsy and make see how see how it it really uh, it really went down. What actually killed him? This is CSI Africa. Welcome to Simba's Pride. Like, <laughs> I'm also worried that this is also a backdoor Scar prequel. I'll be like, <gasps> oh, here's a part of me that would love that. I hate myself here's, for what I Here's that. how he got his Scar. He got his Scar protecting Mufasa, but Mufasa never acknowledged it, and that's why he hates his brother. I'm like. So, so Prince of Persia, got it. <laughs> so Prince of Persia. Yeah. What are you talking about? That's literally what happens. The brother, he, um, the younger brother saves the king when they're boys from a lion. Oh, I was more just thinking Lion King 2 when we get like that flashback. But Oh, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean... Yes, now that you're right. Prince of Persia, but... What a weird... I know we talk about Prince of Persia, but what a weird pull for this, and not just, you know, Lion King 2, when they talk about the origin of Scar. See, see, I've, I've seen Lion King once, Lion King 2 once in my entirety of life, and I barely remember it, so... <laughs> Apparently, so... Prince of Persia is an easier pull for me. <laughs> So we're getting into the Little Mermaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so to clarify, I'm not one of those horrible human beings that's just like, oh, you got a Little Mermaid that looks nothing like the original. I don't care who you cast. I was going to hate this because I hate the original. Little Mermaid can rot in hell for all I care. Jeez. I um. hate the Little Mermaid with every fiber of my being. Ariel is one of the worst Disney characters of all time. So no, this is not me hating on Haley Berry, uh, Bailey. This is just me hating the concept of Little Mermaid and hating I Ariel. Just, uh, Why? Because for 27 plus years, Nathan Ariel is my bane of my existence. <laughs> and I Aww. hate it so much. I want Aww. them all to be seafood and die. 
So, so let me ask you this. Let me let me ask you this. All right. What if? No. Just just hear me out. Hear me out. So they've said they have four new songs for the film, right? What if that's because they're going more with a Grimm's fairy tale? <laughs> Ursula of it. murders the <laughs> little mermaid. Where she legitimately almost bleeds out in the ocean when she tears her fins Ursula, her leg to great Ursula legs. Ursula beats the little mermaid to death with <laughs> flounder's carcass. Like it literally like, wait, have, do you, have you never read like the Grimm's fairy tale version of little, little, I've little actively mermaid? avoided almost everything. Little mermaid related. Okay. Okay. So like, no, like she legit, like almost drown, like dies from blood loss because like her getting legs is actually her legs growing inside of her tail and her having to rip her tail apart. Like it's horrifying. Uh, it's Grimm's fairy tale. See, that that so, story sounds so much better to me. I know, um, doesn't it? Uh, and in the end, Ariel doesn't get the guy. Like she ends up like Ursula like wins and stuff like that. Like it, it, because like she can't talk. Like, Disney make that just version so for cool. just me. I love it. Disney make but, that like, version <laughs> for just me and me alone and no one else. I'll, I'll pay you under the table. Uh, so at, Josh mentioned that there'll be four new songs. So they'll be made by Alan Menken, who did the original music for the first movie, for the original Little Mermaid. Cool! And Lin-Manuel Miranda. God! Disney! You used to do music without Lin-Manuel at one point. <laughs> you can go back no. to that every no, once no. in a while. Lin-Manuel Sorry. does not have to do the music for all of your movies like i'm just not a lin-manuel fan i think he's incredibly overrated of like he's the guy from hamilton we know stop telling us but also but, just like i'm also sick and tired of we don't talk about bruno it's freaking everywhere just like <laughs> disney you could do things Without Lynn Manuel, every once in a while, you are in a very healthy relationship. That's that's awesome. I'm happy for you guys. You're allowed to do activities separate from each other every once in a while. That's a sign <laughs> of a healthy relationship. Uh, that being said, because I don't have the vicious vitriol ball of hate in my stomach for <laughs> for the Little Mermaid, um, I didn't mind the teaser. It was a nice little teaser. No, I hate um, the Little Mermaid, but. Haley Bailey's voice is very good. She sounds spot on. Fantastic. As long as we don't have that stupid line that's been memed to death at this point of like, oh, yeah, dad, dad, I'm 16. I can do what I want. And as an adult, I'm that's like, another reason. No, no that's stop. another reason it has not aged well. <laughs> no, it has not. But it's it's, uh, you know, it's it's a thing. I love the design of her tail a lot. Actually, I the the way that it like kind of splits was very fascinating. But yeah, it's a it's a trailer. It's a teaser. So we'll see what we'll see what else they bring. So then Josh, talk to us about Elemental. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I know, and that's it. And that's that it's about a fire girl and a water man. And that's about that's, all I got. That's basically all we know. <laughs> but um, also, I think we already <laughs> knew that. Uh, so the concept art was it said so, uh, like, said that much already. So um, I'm confused how this is an announcement, but okay, dog. I whatever. just love... I just love when the internet rallies around something and they rallied around Elemental real quick and go, that water guy looks suspiciously like Osmosis Jones. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Go on. Don't <laughs> remind me of that movie, please. Oh, no. Remind me of no. that movie. Osmosis Jones is just a gross movie. It's just, no. Um, I do, so I think about Osmosis Jones anytime I see a boiled egg. Yeah. Because there's that scene where B Bill Murray drops his boiled egg in the in the monkey cage. The monkey puts it in its mouth and then spits it back out at at uh, Bill Murray, and he's like, oh, "Yeah, that's not problematic." And shines it and puts it in his mouth, and that's how he gets the the disease. I was like, "That's horrifying!" Like, no, man, monkey, you can keep the boiled egg. And I don't like that that that, that mental image pops in my head anytime I, I have a boiled egg in my hand. In short, whenever Josh has eggs, he thinks Bill Murray. Yeah, that's worse thoughts to have, I guess. <laughs> it's true. Then we didn't get a ton of news on this, but this is, I think, a very interesting concept. And that is win or lose a Disney Plus series they're working on that'll um, 
basically be a season. I think it's six or eight episodes of following a kid's softball team, but each episode will follow a different player's perspective on that team and will have a different animation style with each episode going. Cool. That's a very creative and fresh, fun idea. I like seeing different animation styles. And Disney, you've gotten complacent recently. You've given up on a lot of other styles, and you're very much just like, here, this style looks like Frozen. This looks like it could very easily be translated into a toy with big eyes. Draw it like this, please. Uh, whereas various animation styles, cool. I like fresh, new, different visual things like into the spider verse was a breath of fresh air animation wise so i think this could be a cool idea i'm not at all biased by the fact that it's a softball slash baseball team uh, i think this is also a really interesting premise of having each episode be a, a character leading up to a specific event that's a cool idea um then we move on to the next announced pixar movie elio which my hungry brain immediately just went to Elio's frozen pizza that you can get at the store that like the uh, rectangle I'm just going uh, Elio? I haven't had actually, that you in know a what? while. Oh, no, no, no. I got you. I got this segue. Much like Elio's, it can it can be presented as the food of the future because of my of like you know being frozen and being able to heat heat it up really easily. Elio will be a movie about a boy who meets aliens and becomes wow. Earth wow. and Earth's ambassador. You're welcome. Look at that. Look at that. That's a great segue. You can't can't deny that. It wasn't um yeah, it's not a bad teaser. No, no, I'm here for it. Sure. Why not? Um I yeah, there's not really much to do. They don't. They didn't really say much <laughs> other than what we said. I, I think what's what's it, this is, becomes a recurring theme, in that it's like, okay, cool. So we're gonna say we're gonna announce some stuff, but we're not actually gonna like give you much to hold on to. Here's some so, concept art. I hope you like it. Yeah, enjoy. Which yeah, Elio, <laughs> he basically like gets mistaken for Earth's ambassador. I'm going, huh? Okay. How sure. does how does that happen? This is ET. This is this is an animated ET, basically. So they officially announced Inside Out Two, which again came out Final. a day or two a day or two beforehand. Okay, I don't feel good in my stomach about this one at all. Um, okay. They completely throw under the rug, or have creatively figured out some other stuff that they're just like, uh, Riley will be in. We'll be a teenager, so she'll have new emotions and she'll have different emotions. And I'm going, so what you're saying is you didn't want to pay certain actors, which also very publicly came out right before Inside Out 2's announcement at D23 that Bill Hader, who I believe was Rage mm-hmm. slash Anger and Mindy Kaling, who was Envy or no, Disgust. Sorry, disgust or Envy. The yeah, green one, yeah. Uh, both of them will not be back for Inside Out 2 because they were both um, reportedly extremely lowballed, both being offered around $100,000 each, to which I'm going, whoa, yo, hold on. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I had heard they've been lowballed, but I didn't realize it was that like that little. Like, like- I know voice actors get paid less anyway because... <laughs> It's frustrating because people like in front of the camera means more. You're more special. I'm like voice actors are actors too. They they really matter to the industry. But even voice actor wise, a hundred thousand dollars is extremely lowballing an actor that two actors that were a part of a very successful first movie that have only seen their stock rise. Both Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling are very big names nowadays. And I know they'll be like, well, you're just sitting in a booth for a couple of days. It's still a lot of work. And also just, it's not so much the, the time that's put into it. It's what do you bring to the table in that? It's like when you are really good at something, you can charge what you want. And $100,000 is extremely low balling, especially when it looks like Amy Poehler is going to be making at least $5 million off of Inside Out 2. And I'm going, mm-hmm. hmm. And I'm sure that has nothing to do with her being bumped up to the producer, which that's fine. You see actors bump up to producer roles all the time. But 
when it looks that public of she's making this much and her co-stars are making that much, they just kind of go, oh, she's a teenager now. She's got new feelings. I'm going. So she doesn't sure. have anger. She doesn't have disgust. Like no, what? teenagers never have disgust or anger whatsoever. That's not one of their core emotions that they ever feel. So like, I want to be excited for Inside Out too, but that I think casts a huge shadow over the whole announcement. But once again, that was something that was announced ahead of time. Yeah, wasn't really much. Much. <laughs> yeah nothing new nothing here got new here guys i i a part of me feels bad for the people who paid paid a ticket to go to d23 because it's like oh so we already knew that got it okay cool all right fun all right nice cool 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 bet 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 and then last up there's gonna be a rant and coming for this one um the last i think is i couldn't tell if this was either disney it has to be disney not disney pixar but the last movie that they announced will be coming is a movie called Wish, which will celebrate the 100th anniversary of Disney Studio, which was first founded in uh, 1923. So we're at the 100 year for that. Uh, they go in Wish. It'll look at the everyone's wished upon a star. We're going to look at the origin of that star. Y'all have really run out of ideas. If you're going when you wish upon a star, where did that star come from? Chapek, I know you don't care about Disney history, but this is one that you should probably know. When you wish upon a star, we know where the star comes from. It's from Pinocchio, the movie that you just dropped on your streaming service as a live action remake this past weekend. You should it know. It looks terrible. <laughs> Supposedly it is terrible. Uh People are united in their hatred for Pinocchio. They're like, when you wish upon a star, where does that come from? It comes from Pinocchio. <laughs> They're like, well, what, what, where does the star come from? Where was the star created? I don't care. Like, I don't, I didn't actually believe that the star had wish granting powers. It was the blue fairy and wishing upon the star was more just like a symbolic gesture. You have run out of ideas here. But what about the star? It's like saying, all right, we've run out of ideas. We're going to do a Pulp Fiction prequel, but we're going to trace back to the guy that created the burger in Pulp Fiction that Jules eats. That's what we're going to do. What, what was he feel? Why did he create the burger? Why did he create the Royale with cheese? No one cares. <laughs> Why did that that guy that has an overdose in the film? Why what led him to those decisions? Like yeah, like the uh, needle. What was the adrenaline needle doing that day? Doing like yeah, God like, of War style, Lord of like, War style, where you just follow the needle all day. Care. I don't care. This is so much Disney grandstanding. Like the only thing interesting about it is that they're going to blend watercolor style and 3D animation. That's something they haven't done in a while. And that's very interesting visually. But the story wise, I could not care about. And I hate that, like, they're just kind of shunning Pixar, continuing, continuing, yeah continuing to shun pixar and all of this and it just disney you 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 haven't been anything without pixar like lately these past decade or so yeah i just i don't get it like oh we've all wished upon a star y'all really stop using when you wish upon a star in your marketing a solid decade ago you really don't use that song anymore in any of your parks or I, I would say almost two decades ago, dog. It's like how they kind of moved away from Zippity Doodah because it was associated with that one movie that they don't acknowledge. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of problematic stuff with Pinocchio that you don't <laughs> want to distance yourself from. But they, when you wish upon a star, I get it. Used to be your your tentpole song, like the the Disney icon. Now they now they just whatever is now it's whatever's popular, like whatever Moana or. Mm -hmm. Frozen song is popular. Moving on to Lucasfilm the next day on Saturday. Uh, stuff happened, I guess. Uh, they showed the final trailer for Andor, which, okay, I'll say this. It's the best trailer yet for Andor, and it has officially made me go, 
I'll watch the first three episodes when it drops. Because up yeah. to this point, I didn't care. I know a lot of people have been hyped for it, but I I haven't cared about Andor primarily because yeah. I hated Rogue One. I thought casting Andor was a very weak character, but the show at least now has my curiosity off that last trailer. It was a good trailer. I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, and this definitely has the vibe of Rogue One. A lot of the stuff that attracted me to Rogue One is definitely present here. Um, yeah, it looks super interesting. And there's a lot of interesting characters in here. And I, I it, it's, it will be it, cool to see... How do I say this? To see where Andor was in comparison to where he ends up in, in Rogue One and seeing like, okay, what led him to be a kind of a very morally gray, uh, flat kind of person? Like, and what, you know, all, all that kind of very interesting stuff. So it, the trailer itself, it, if anything, is very visually interesting as well as uh, like you, it was, it's the one that's gotten me hyped at least. So then, Bad Batch Season 2 is coming in January. Okay, uh, moving on to Mandalorian Season 3. I was, gonna, I was like, I haven't even seen Season, season 1. What Me the neither, world? but it's <laughs> it's the only actual announce, one of the few actual announcements from the weekend. Yeah. I know there's some people listening to this that care about Bad Patch. We're just not one of them. Then they showed the Mandalorian Season 3 teaser, which I would not be surprised if this was the same teaser trailer that they showed at CinemaCon a while yeah. back. Agreed. Um, Looked super, super cool. Wondering why it has to be spring 2023. Maybe it's not done or uh, maybe they're just kind of pacing it out. But trailer looked cool, but very ambiguous. Like doesn't really show what the threat is. It just shows of once again, Mandu and Grogu are going to have to go to Mandalore, which looks amazing, by the way. Yeah, let's go, baby. And bathe in the water. I'm still sticking with my theory that Christopher Lloyd is an old Mandalorian who's like a century at the water. So kind of, mm-hmm. I think that'd be super, super cool. I'm just, I'm more just curious to see what he does. Um, I, I, I like the lo- the line of the trailer when Bo is talking to Grogu is very interesting to me. And I think they're going to lean really heavy into it. Um, especially if they ever are going to go uh, like, talk about gray jedi so like this idea that there's different sects inside inside of the big organizations uh when he's talking about like the cult that your father was in almost destroyed the mandalorian culture because you know that they were so uh they were like very one way and blah 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 but like that that line is so interesting to me and i i do we're gonna be seeing so many different kinds of of, of uh mandalorians now i'm super stoked uh about that so I, what, what's interesting is i wouldn't be surprised now that <clears throat> i mean i know ahsoka is, is the show is going to be coming and it's around the corner whatever and i barely if i talked about it at, at, all, at all um at, at d23 but I, now that we kind of see where they're going at, at like you know in this teaser I wouldn't be surprised if Sabine at least shows up for a cameo in in Mandalorian in season three. Yeah, that I can absolutely see that. Mm-hmm. Because they they showed they showed an actual be like, here's your first official look at Sabine and and as in the Ahsoka series, and it's her back turned from really really yeah. far away, but and she's like painting something. No, no, no. She's looking at the mural from the end of the Rebels finale. Oh, interesting. And it's spot on. Like it's the it's animated and everything. I'm going, oh, I know that wall. Like it's I know that. I I, I understood that reference. Go fi- I got that one. Go find our <laughs> whale boy. Go find our dude, whale that's... boy and his blue friend. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I, I really wait. am like there's a hardcore part of me that's super excited to see what what Ezra has been up to all these years what how much how much more powerful he's gotten after all this time uh i just it's very interesting to me that like sabim and, and, and ahsoka are very interesting characters but i think you and i are going to be watching it for 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 ezra and for thrawn so <laughs> and then in flashback scenes 
bring back Freddie Prince Jr. as Kanan just because. Could you imagine if, he sh- if Freddie Prince Jr. shows up as Kanan? I mean, he I voiced am- him in Rise real quick, but. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's cool. Sure. Okay. But like at the same time, God, that would be just so stinking cool. Like Freddie deserves some on screen roles. Like, heck yeah. I, don't, I feel so bad for him that he's like, he not. Okay, he's starting. I feel bad for. The, I don't feel, I feel bad for him. He's starting for a wrestling man. company, dude. Yeah, I was like, I feel bad for this man who's made millions of dollars doing uh, voice acting. Married to Sarah uh, Michelle Gellar with two wonderful kids. Has gosh, a great podcast. Dude. It's not ours, although yeah. <laughs> although we're open to collaborations. There, FPJ. Let let us know, man. We can we yeah, can help yeah, you yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, man. With we have a very large fan base now. Like we, we we're, we're pretty cool. <laughs> We're kind of a big deal. We're kind of a big, all right, big deal. Speaking of big deal. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Harrison Ford is in that scene. Had, okay. Yeah, then, he's the one that says it. They showed some footage of Indiana Jones, which they did not say what this movie is called, unless it's just called Indiana Jones, because they showed a picture uh, just of the classic Indiana Jones logo throughout mm-hmm. this whole conversation. So, Maybe the movie's called Indiana Jones, or they just haven't decided a name yet. Uh, but they showed some footage to the audience, but they didn't show anything online. They didn't like publicly release it, but we got some descriptions, and it shows like talks about how it's set both in the modern day and in the past. So they're using some de aging. I'm like, I'm always a little wary of that. Yeah. Um, but it also seems pretty confirmed that um, Fleabag actress, uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge is going to be playing his granddaughter and i'm going i'm on board. i'm on board oh my god i am on for that are you kidding me you you know how much i love fleabag like that's such uh and i love her as an actress she's fantastic sorry so i didn't mean to interrupt you there but oh no you're good (laughs) but yeah so it looks like she's gonna be um the main character i wouldn't be surprised if they try and shia labeouf this of try and do a 2.0 of that of make her the new hero going forward but also they showed like some concept art of some of the costumes which raised quite a bit of questions because Matt Mickelson's character, his outfit looks suspiciously like the bad guy from Raiders with the black trench coat with the black hat. I'm going, oh, or is he just a Nazi with the same exact wardrobe? Don't know. <laughs> That's entirely within the, within the realm of possibilities, and which is hilarious because when it comes to Indiana Jones, we always come back to Nazis. <laughs> always got to be Nazis. Leave always. aliens alone. It's got to be Nazis. It's got to be religious artifacts of some kind. Because yes, exactly. It's when it works best when it's not, you know, actual child slavery. Um, mm-hmm. But what gets me interested in this is Harrison Ford, one, was actually there and not grumpy. <laughs> so, you know, that's always a win. But two, supposedly he was very emotional talking about this movie and saying that this will be the final time he's playing the character. But his ringing endorsement. I think to me is a huge thumbs up. This is a good sign for this movie because y'all, if Harrison Ford doesn't like something, he's just going to tell you, <laughs> He'll tell you, he does not care. <laughs> and no. the fact that he was getting emotional thinking or talking about this movie makes me think, okay, they've done something right by this movie. And it's, Oh, it's, it's James Mangold. I'm not worried about this at all. Or 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 he's thinking about how terrible this is about to be, and he's going to be like, "This is my legacy." Oh no! <laughs> as long as no Which CGI doubt. gophers or monkeys, we should be okay. Uh, I, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's always hard because, like, my first interaction with the Indiana Jones character was Crystal Skull. So like yeah yeah yeah, but I went back and like rewatched the other one. So I was like, oh, this is great. Uh, yeah, this is so much better than Crystal Skull. Um, but like, I have vivid memories of those ants dragging that Nazi down into into one of their holes, and I was like, that's that's absolutely horrifying, and I'm not here for it at all. But uh, it'll be interesting. I, I think what would be really cool is um, a certain somebody who's also related to to the Indiana Jones series just recently returned back to acting. So I'd be curious to see if he ends up showing up in the film. Oh, did you not see that? Did you not see that? No. That actor, the actor that played short round, did actually reunite with Harrison Ford on the floor afterwards. 
Okay, he's but like gonna that... segues us perfectly. We're not gonna talk about it extensively, but he is actually gonna be in Loki season two. Oh, interesting. So okay, when he cool. showed up to that panel, he goes, "Oh, is this not the Indiana Jones panel? I'm sorry." <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like, "That guy." And so he got to hang out and hug Harrison Ford after the thing. So, uh, yeah, Loki season two is the thing. Well, they really talked about it. Uh, yeah, short round and the guy from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, yeah. Probably won't be in Indiana Jones, but he's going to be in Loki season two. So, we're going to talk about Marvel. What happened, Feige? What <laughs> happened? You brought uh, yeah. everything to Comic-Con, and you saved nothing for D23. So, we're going to talk about all the stuff that was, quote-unquote, announced or talked about, more or less talked about. Uh, so, they talked about Wakanda Forever, obviously, because that's the next Marvel movie. It's kind of the... It's what's on everyone's mind right now. Yep. I'm trying to remember if they showed... I think they did show some footage to the people in attendance there. They didn't yeah. release anything online. I think they showed a full clip. Um, okay. I'm I'm interested. Feige says Wakanda Forever is the biggest thing they've ever done. I'm going... So you just being a Paul Heyman type here? You just hyping up the movie? Because as much as I'm looking forward to Wakanda Forever, there's no way it's bigger than Infinity War or Endgame in terms of just... How is this the biggest thing you've ever done? Maybe in terms of like sets or emotional yeah. weight that you bring to the movie? <laughs> what's what's the quantifier here, dude? Like this is the biggest thing we've ever done. Um, okay, I guess Endgame or Infinity War doesn't count, or or uh, even like this the awesome like bit of history, cinematic history that is event the first Avengers movie. Like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Uh like hype it up. Sure. Like I'm I, I'm saying that, but like I am excited for Wakanda oh, Forever. Same. I don't want to I don't want to get that twisted. But for some for Feige to be like the biggest thing we've ever done is kind of like but like literally t- almost two decades of storytelling. I mean, unless he's like trying to tell us that those rumors about the post credit scene are true, in which case, you know, if that gets revealed when you didn't make any announcements about something later, you're going to really take the shine away from the movie itself because everyone will be talking about the ending instead mm-hmm. and that. Uh, but yeah, Wakanda Forever. Cool. It's more of just like a showcase for the people there, and they didn't really break new ground for that. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, kind of just repeated things that we could piece together ourselves. They, yeah. They, they're like, they said, Quantumania will tie directly into Avengers, the Kang Dynasty. Well, considering what? we've known for like a year now that Jonathan Majors is playing Kang and will be the main villain of Quantumania, <laughs> no duh, no Sherlock. Duh. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> there's your connection. They share the same villain and will probably, you know, set the stage for that uh, like how is that the biggest piece of news coming out of the ant-man and wasp quantumania stuff i don't think they showed any footage for that but that's like the next one after wakanda so we gotta get some news on that soon it, it's, <laughs> it's just like bizarre it's, it, they might as well have come out and be like Hell all right guys and the man and and the wasp uh quantum media uh uh, uh d- the new news that we have to drop is uh paul rudd still looks the same as he did 20 years ago i was like well yeah we know what <laughs> yeah it's just obvious it's like okay it's just bizarre uh so then i'll be honest they dropped the best thing from the entire D23 panel. I oh, don't dude. even care. Um, I saw, just seeing this trailer alone, I was like, Nathan is going to love every second of what's about to happen. I do. I do. <laughs> I don't even care. It could be hot garbage, but I doubt it will be. So what we're talking about is Marvel is doing, I believe it's like a one shot or limited series mm-hmm. called Werewolf by Night, which is an incredibly uber niche marvel comic that i'm not overly familiar with but it has been flown around in the ether in the rumor mill for a really long time so it's nice to just see it officially confirmed with a trailer which we'll dive into in a second here but i believe it's actually being directed by michael giacchino which i think is outstanding um for those that don't know michael giacchino is a music composer 
of like the Batman, the Spider-Man trilogy with Tom Holland, uh, the Incredibles, the JJ Abrams Star Trek movies. Like this guy's a music guy, but he's directing something. I'm o- I'm very curious. But Werewolf by Night is basically Disney going, Disney and Marvel going, oh hey, Universal. Uh, what's your plan for the monster universe? What are, what are you doing with your monsters? We don't really know. W- w- why do you ask? Oh, no reason. And we'll <laughs> just go and do it ourselves then. As Werewolf by Night basically just looks like the Universal Monsters, but in the MCU. And I do not hate it in the slightest. Oh my god, this looks creepy. It looks dark. It looks... It's in black and white, and the attention to detail to looking like those original monster movies is spot on. Mm-hmm. Man Thing makes an appearance at one point in the trailer. I'm going, oh, we go on there. This yes. looks like it was specifically targeted for the spoopy crowd, and I love it. And it's coming out uh, beginning of October. It, mm, it's the only thing that rustled my jimmies all weekend. Uh, so what's interesting is um, the comic has been floating around in the ether quite a bit lately because in the comic, to my understanding, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, it's the first appearance of Moon Knight. I believe so. Uh, so <laughs> uh, is Oscar Isaac going to show up? Is that all like no. imagine? So better the- yet, better yet, if they have Moon Knight on Werewolf by Night, Dracula. Where's my money? <laughs> I need, it. I need yes. it to happen now. It's 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 in the realm of possibilities. But I like the the film itself. The trailer is fantastic. Uh, it basically, from what I gather, it's the a bunch of people could collect them into a room, and they're told one of you is a werewolf, and you have to figure out which one. Um, which is so fascinating. I love that. It's an oh. all in black and white, and it's spoopy, and I love it. Gosh, it's, it's going to be so fun, honestly. Um, it's really coming out of nowhere. Um, it's next month. I, I know. like, And this is the first we're hearing about it. So it's it's it's, it's very interesting. Um, I wonder... I, I There's a part of me that like wonders how consequential this is going to be to oh, anything. Oh, probably not, and I don't care. Probably not at all. Uh, and that's why they like just announced it, and it's going to be on Disney Plus and whatever. You know, just do your thing, dude. Yeah, but, uh, probably, yeah, it looks great. It's gonna be fun. It looks like yeah, it looks like it's uh inconsequential to the larger universe, which I'm totally fine with. It means just just means they can go as bonkers as they want to on this. Yeah. Uh, then they showed the other trailer, which I'll be honest, the job of a trailer is to get you on board with whatever you're gonna watch. And this did. Um mm-hmm. and that is the trailer for the upcoming Disney Plus Secret Invasion series, which I have been very against for a while just because uh, Secret Invasion is a very big storyline. I thought it deserved a much bigger um, bigger scope within the MCU. But also, it just kind of seemed like an afterthought uh, because there'd be like, a lot of the cast from Captain Marvel's coming back. Yippee, skippy. Um, just looking at some of the people involved, I'm just like, eh, well, it's, it's whatever. Seems so, Seeing some of the set photos, I was like, oh, looks whatever and then the trailer drops and it immediately brings me back to like winter soldier vibes mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. oh they're not making a joke every 30 sec every three seconds not 30 seconds every three seconds this seems serious uh but it's also kind of ambiguous and that yeah. beard on fury looks amazing well, terrifying that, sh- that shot when ben Mendelssohn's talos like grabs the guy by the throat and all of a sudden there's like dozens of that guy surrounding him. Like, oh, I, I like where this is going. This this feels like a proper espionage series that I can not lie. I went from no interest to, OK, I'm very much interested in this very quick. That's good job, trailer. Yeah. Plus, with the addition of Don Cheadle, like, yeah, let's go, dude. Give me some okay. more Don. I guess. You know what? You know what? No. So here's the thing. As an actor, I love me some Don Cheadle. I think he's fantastic. Um, I think he has not been given the opportunity to really shine. Um, he has always been labeled. Uh, his character has always been labeled as, you know, Tony Stark sidekick. And I think this will be an opportunity kind of swinging into our next kind of topic. Uh 
this will give him an opportunity to actually shine with um, them announcing Armor Wars is still coming. It'll just be set after Secret Invasion. So I'd be interested to see if like th- that this like quote unquote gap that Iron Man Iron Man left if if you know War Machine actually rises and fills that gap on the team. I'm totally which I'm totally okay with. So yeah, we're getting Armor Wars, which will be set after Secret Invasion. It's a thing. It's a yeah, thing, it's that's, a thing happening. that's happening. I think it's more of Kevin Feige coming out and going, yes, yes, I know. I heard you guys complaining at Comic-Con. Arm Rewards is still happening. Here. Well, I talked about it. I mentioned it. Let it go. Um, <laughs> then we get to probably the most controversial part of all Gosh, of D23. Dude. Kevin Feige comes out and announces Matt Shackman is officially directing Fantastic Four, which we knew. We already knew that for about a week or two. Then he goes... And that's all I have to announce for Fantastic Four at this time. See you back here for for D23 Expo 2024 to talk more about Fantastic Four. I'm going, what? That's you did insane. not just do that to us. You did. If you had nothing to tell us except that Matt Shackman was directing it, you didn't need to come out at all for that, basically. We knew Matt Shackman was directing. That had already been said by the major trades. We were expecting some casting. And I know that was just fan expectation, but at the same time, in previous D23s, we've gotten major casting announcements, we've got major like movie release announcements, and now we have to suffer from more and more weeks of, oh man, um, it could be John Krasinski, it could be that guy from You, it could be Henry Cavill. It was just like, guys, we were so close to just having a definitive answer. Can- why did you do this to us, Feige? Just, just please stop. And also to his point of, we'll be back here in 2024 to talk about um, Fantastic Four at D23. If D23 is the same day, the same time frame in 2024 as it was this year, September-ish, we'll already know a lot about Fantastic yeah, Four by that point. That movie's coming out in November. Else. So I'm like, we'll talk about Fantastic Four when it's two months Almost away from... Out. what. Uh, it was that what? was the biggest glaring emission, and when that happened, I think the energy got sucked out of the room, and everyone kind of going, "Well, Fantastic Four's not getting any news. We're really not getting any news, then, are we?" And we yeah. definitely didn't. Uh, yeah. No Fantastic Four, Josh. What? What are you thinking there? I. I'm trying to. Th- not like yell um because this is kind of like they're gonna do what they want you know i'm just we're just a fan and i think there was a, a cer- certainly a level of like fan expectation of what they might announce um i know you and i were getting kind of hyped about it and like hey like maybe they'll at least announce you know the the rest of the, the you know maybe they'll announce the four or or what have you um so there's definitely a lot of disappointment when it comes to that. Um, but it feels like a slap in the face to tell us something that we already knew, which a lot of this expo was anyway. Um, tell us something that not only did we already know, we kind of already knew, like f- we've known for about a week and a half. Um, and then go, no, nope, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. And walk just like leave the topic there feels insulting it feels like i don't i don't know how to say to me i do i still think do i think that means that they have nothing going on behind the scenes oh no absolutely that's far from it i think they've already got everybody cast i think they've got the 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 script written i think you know, Matt Shackman has been on board for longer than a week and a half ago. Uh, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to start filming soon, um, especially if it comes out next year. Um, I just to have nothing to tell us, no, no, like concept art, no, uh, uh, what the movie's going to be called, like nothing to have to give us nothing. I. I don't know, man. I it just it hits hits me hits me in a really bad spot, and I'm really not a fan of it. It's kind of like when when they announced quote unquote announced phase five and six um, at, at Comic Con. I was like, I 
yeah, but there's massive gaps of stuff that you're not announcing. So it's like, what if you're why, why even why Nothing even announce this stuff? Related, which is weird. yeah, like which is even weirder. So then they talk briefly about the Daredevil show with Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, I don't think they said this at the panel, but it was asked in an interview. This is not like Daredevil season four from Netflix. This is closer to a Daredevil season one type of situation for people that are asking, like, is this a continuation or is this a new thing? Mm -hmm. Probably could be closer to a new thing. They yeah. did reveal a new logo, which the double D Dude, Daredevil's getting his double D's and I'm super excited about it. And also like, you know, Josh is anxiously awaiting the, the yellow suit on She-Hulk. So here's what here's what I think is going to happen. And because I'm saying it, it's what's going to happen. Obviously. The the yellow slash mustard suit will show up in She-Hulk. Then the black and red suit from the comics will show up in Echo. And then he'll get the traditional classic, like a pretty comic accurate suit by the end of his show. Including the cane and everything. Like I won't say it will be closer to the Ben Affleck Daredevil one, but... It'll be a lot better than the Netflix one. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm gonna lean all the way into it. It's gonna get, they're gonna go full Ben Affleck Batman. Uh, no, also Batman, it won't even ben be Affleck, Charlie Daredevil. Cox. It will be Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at some point they just switch them out, and we're like, like expect us to like not like dif differentiate the two. <laughs> Look, God, no, or even better, Charlie Cox only plays. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't play Daredevil at all. Anytime it's Daredevil, it's been, <laughs> been Affleck. <laughs> but yeah, they they released the logo. I'm like, it looks cool. Nice to see the double D's again. Nice of them to maybe they'll rip off the crow again and just do it in fire like they did with the crow. Yeah. Movie. Um, I'm looking forward to a comic accurate Daredevil suit. I think that'd be super super cool. I'm just I'm very much looking forward to this Daredevil show. I'm very curious to see what it'll look like. Then they talk very briefly about Captain America 4. Once again, they'll be like, we've added to the cast. Yeah, you added people that were in Falcon Winter Soldier, so it's not that surprising. They're just like, yeah. um, the guy that will be the new Falcon's back. I'm like, yeah, we kind of figured. He has the That'd wings at the end of the show. Yeah, um, like Isaiah what? Bradley will be back. Yeah, we kind of figured. But like the big shocker friend. is Tim Blake Nelson from Incredible Hulk is back as the leader. And I'm going... Oh, that's a poll. No, thank you. Um, I know some people are going to be mad about that, but I don't care about the leader. I don't think the lead. I think the leader's kind of an uninteresting villain. I just he's never really done it for me. Uh, he's just Hector Hammond, but green like he's he's not that interesting, but also. He's a weird villain for a Captain America movie like, yeah. I don't know. I'll be curious to see how this plays out, but just feels like uh, maybe it ties directly into the Thunderbolts, which is the last thing that they've talked about. Maybe the leader is somehow connected to the Thunderbolts. And yes, I'm totally stealing that from Nando V Movies video. Um, but the leader is an odd choice for the villain for Captain America. But hey, we did say, can we please get something non Hydra related? Well, we're getting something non Hydra related, so. For now. Once again, like the mummy ride, I probably should have just been a little more specific, I guess. I, well, also, like, oddly making Edward Norton's The Hulk movie canon. It is, but, it's been canon for a while. I mean, Thunderbolt like, okay. Ross. Okay, okay, canon in that characters, yes, that would, would show up from that film, um, but not canon as in, like, uh, the current Mark Ruffalo's. Uh, hulk ever references any of the events of that film nobody's like referenced that film at all true so lastly for like the big announcements for the marvel stuff oh boy here's here's where i do get mad they gave us our lineup for the thunderbolts movie yay wow this thing is anticlimactic you've got ghost from ant-man and the wasp you've got Red Guardian from Black Widow. You've got Yelena from Black Widow and Hawkeye. You've got the Winter Soldier, Bucky, which that raises all kinds of questions there. Um, you've got another dude. I forget who was next to him on the poster. I'm trying to remember. 
Um, and then you also have Taskmaster. It'll come back to me at a random time of who's who was next to Bucky or some other guy. And I was like, oh, that's that's fine. But the problem is, oh, and also uh, Val. It's hilarious you're forgetting him. It's it's the um it's uh U.S. agent. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the Thunderbolts are supposed to be like a group, of, like the anti Avengers of like a group of bad guys coming together, closer to the Suicide Squad actually, a group of bad guys coming together to do a mission. Mm -hmm. Um, this group for one does not feel very eclectic. It's basically, boy, I hope you watched Black Widow and Captain America, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, and that's about it. Like the most of the core cast is just Black Widow characters. Um, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't like Ghost like disappear because her disease takes over? No, she got healed of her disease. Remember? I don't remember. I haven't watched. I haven't watched that movie in forever. But also, in the comics, the Thunderbolts. All right, nerd. <laughs> no, this is important. I think in yeah. the comics, the Thunderbolts are named that because they're led by General. Thunderbolt Ross, played by William Hurt in the MCU, but unfortunately he passed away recently. Also, Thunderbolt Ross is known to turn into the Red Hulk. No Red Hulk on the team. More than likely no Thunderbolt Ross because that actor passed away and they might do a recast, I'm not sure. Why are we still doing this? Um... And the fact that this is the movie that ends Phase 5 still has me scratching my head of, like, why? Why is this the end cap? This this feels like, oh, your Suicide Squad movie sucked? Let's try our hand at it using mainly just Black Widow characters. But, like, a lot of these characters aren't really bad guys. Red Guardian is not a bad guy. Yelena is not a bad guy. Ghost turns babyface by the end of it um we have a bucky. whole show talking about how bucky's a yeah, good guy now bucky's absolutely not even a tweener he's a full-on babyface u.s agent is probably the closest thing to an anti-hero in this entire group and even him even then he's he's not the worst guy he's He's a little full, too full and stuff. He's not worthy of the shield, but he's not a bad guy. And then you've got Taskmaster, who exists. Maybe this will be where they fix Taskmaster from Black yeah, Widow. I, I hope, but... Yeah, because I'm trying to remember... Because I only watched Black Widow once. Um, That's all you but need. I, but I feel like she... Her, like the actual girl that gets put in the suit... Um, I think she passes away... If I remember right, mm -mm. I no. I just write Her people and Black off. Widow just kind of shake hands and then walk away. Nah, I like my version better where she dies. In which case, <laughs> that made, put that somebody cool. new in it. Put the actual character mm -hmm. from the comics in it. Yeah, well, it could because that has potential to be interesting. Um, if it's a different person, like the actual quote unquote the actual person. Um, and for Red Guardian to interact with Taskmaster again would be interesting because the last time Red Guardian met Taskmaster, he, he got his butt whooped. Um, so who knows? I we'll see. I guess I. It's there's all kinds of weird. It, there's a lot about Phase Five and Six that feels very much like. How do I say this? The continuation maybe, of Phase Four, just staying in place. That maybe Feige isn't in, in control. I I guess I I and, and maybe that's because I still have like a decent amount of faith in Feige, but like there's just been something with season with with you know phase four and now five and six that feels off and not like and some of the ways that Feige is answering things like that doesn't feel like him or at least the Feige that we've come to know for the past kind of you know decade. So it's just interesting that uh, th this is what, like you said, like this is what they're ending phase five with. I don't know how they're going to end up tying that in to, to phase six. Uh, we'll see, I guess. Well, 
D23 is weird across the board, but what were the big headlines or the big takeaways that you saw from D23? What are your thoughts on D23 this year? Were you disappointed? Do you think it was better than we're giving it credit for? Let us know in the comments below. We always like hearing from you guys. And as always, if you like what you hear and you want to hear more, subscribe to us on whatever audio platform you're listening to us on. It was iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Help us get to 700 subscribers. We're almost there. And as always, stay sharp, movie guys and gals.